the spectrum out of the screen, takes all of the components of white light, and we have only to slide the blue spot over onto the orange to get white light back again. That is why we are able to see mixtures of two color rays as one color. We don't need green light in order to see green. And we don't need orange light to make us see orange. Mixtures of blue and yellow light and of yellow and red light will create green and orange for us. To make the eye see any and all colors, then only the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, need be used. From these primaries, a complete color circle can be created. That is why it is possible to reproduce the brilliant colors of nature, faithful, with just three primary colors in modern color reproducing processes. Each of the three colors is first extracted from the picture through its proper color filter. Any piece of transparent colored glass is a filter letting through light of its own color. If some other light strikes the filter, it cannot get through. If a mixed light strikes the glass, some of its components may get through, while others are stopped and absorbed by the glass. Hence, filters extract from a scene not only the pure color, Rays from the object are so mixed and confused that we see nothing but a blur of changing light. But when we put a lens in the camera, rays of light from the object are controlled. They are bent and aimed at correct points on the retina. That is why we have a lens and cornea on the eye to bend or refract the rays. From each point on an object, the light is reflected in all directions. All the rays of this reflected light, which are aimed toward the aperture of the eye, are bent by the cornea and lens so that they come to a single point inside the eye. This is what we mean by focusing. From every other point on the object, the light is focused at a corresponding point inside the eye. In this way, a clear image of the object is built up. Because the rays cross, 
The image is upside down. The muscles attached to the rim of the lens regulate the curvature of the lens surface so that the image falls on the retina and is seen sharply. Infrared light has no visual effect on our eyes. So in order to see its results, we must use a camera containing a special film which is sensitive only to infrared light. To furnish invisible light for the infrared camera, we will use these big electric units which produce no visible light at all. And now, for the first time on the motion picture screen, we are going to see a picture made entirely by infrared light in a dark room. There go the lights. A remarkable new device splits light into separate narrow rays so that the path of a beam can easily be followed. Notice that a light spreads out from its source in all directions. We can see how a mirror reflects light. How a prism bends the rays in different directions. and how light can even be bent around corners in tubes and pipes. Now let's see the effect of a simple reflecting surface used to control light. The rays leave their source, strike the reflector, and bounce back on themselves in the same path. Then if we place a lens like this in the path of the light, the rays are bent inward. Now let's try another type of lens, similar to the lens used in automobile headlights. Instead of bringing the rays together at a point, this lens bends them so they go out in parallel lines. In the motor car headlight, the new system of light control makes use of the type of reflecting surface called a parabolic reflector.
At night, therefore, only the rods can function. But because a whole patch of rods is connected with each brain cell, each point is registered as a blur, and things are not seen sharply. When the light is brighter, the cones come into play, because each cone has a private wire to its own brain cell, they provide the sharp details of the picture. But the cones, the organs of sharp, bright light vision, do more. They give us the fascinating world of color. In each cone are three chemical substances. Each substance is sensitive only to a particular group of colors. Thus, one is most sensitive to red, one to yellow, and one to blue. When a particular color of light strikes the cone, the corresponding substance breaks down, and the corresponding nervous current flows to the brain. When a different color, yellow for example, strikes the cone, the yellow substance sends a nervous current to the brain. <laughs> 